plenty of people have reviewed today's game, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. And while there's not much to say left about this game, it's still really great at... It's still a fantastic game that... Mighty Morphin Power Rangers... Okay. What do you want? Well, um, we just feel left out is all. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. What am I talking about? Why is it that my video games talk to me? A am I dreaming? You're not dreaming. Maybe I'm still dead from the previous episode. Hmm. So is this hell? You're not dead. This isn't hell. Well then, what's your problem? Everybody always talks about us separately, like we're some kind of crappy afterthought. Well, aren't you? I mean, everybody loves the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game from the Super Nintendo. We don't. That's because y'all are haters. Why don't you play all four of us then? See for yourself. Fine. But don't blame me when you're lying in a pool of your own 16-bit tears. Woohoo! I shouldn't have to tell you what Power Rangers is, but if you're not familiar, here's a little haiku that I came up with. Go, Power Rangers. Six tood wielding teenagers. Earth's greatest hope, duh. Bottom line, the Power Rangers were all over television in the early to mid-90s, so it makes sense that several video games were released for home video game consoles during that time. But what's surprising is the level of distinctions between these titles. In some cases, retro games of the same names on different systems typically had very slight differences. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers games were perfect examples of two different developers trying opposite approaches to game development. While this is admirable, it often leaves certain gamers with a product that may be inferior to its console rival, which really helps fuel the fire of the console wars. People fighting like cats and dogs over which version of Power Rangers was superior was not an uncommon argument to be heard at school playground. We may as well start with the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis original titles. Now even though both of these titles are very different from each other, we're going to compare and contrast and see which one is more more phenomenal and which one is more bulk and skull quality? I don't know. Let's start with the Super Nintendo version. Released in 1994 in North America and 95 in other countries, Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo was developed by one of the top Super Nintendo developers of their time, Natsume. These guys and gals produce some amazing work, and Power Rangers is just the tip of their already awesome Game Create Iceberg. I mean, just listen to that intro music well-equipped with digitized voice chorus and all. It makes you want to do some hip-hop keto. All your favorite rangers are here in this game. Trini, Yellow Ranger. Billy, Blue Ranger. Jason, Red Ranger. Kimberly, Pink Ranger. Zack, Black Ranger. And Tommy, Green Ran... T Tommy... How could they leave out the best ranger? Now listen, don't take my word for it. While I love each character individually, Tommy just had a little something special going on. Maybe it was the foil shield. Who knows? But the green ranger, not in this game. Why? Just tell me why. There is a ton of speculation regarding the lack of a green ranger, but it's something we're going to have to touch on a little bit later. Right now, let's get back to action. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is a clear-cut beat-em-up game that is as simple to learn to play as it is difficult to master. The game starts out with Rita appearing ominously in the sky, then disappearing. Clearly this means our heroes have to go to battle, but what's up with this? No ranger outfits right off the bat? I have to play as the teenagers with attitude first? Okay, but for how long? Almost the entire level? Well... That's bogus. This isn't called Teenagers with Attitude the game, it's called Power Rangers for a reason. Oh uh, well. So, every character has their own set of attacks, all working off the same exact move list. There's an up and punch attack, a jump kick, and a crouching move, 
and when you eventually morph into the Rangers, you get some extra moves, such as the Triple Gut Punch. It's really fun to pull off these sweet combos with your weapons, giving this game a nice transition from Final Fight into Golden Axe territory. It's also fun to point out that in these Power Ranger games, well, the women... Uh, they look like dudes after they morph. And, you know, even though the Yellow Ranger was actually a guy in the original Zeo Ranger Japanese Sentai show, it's kind of funny to see Kim go from this curvy gal to a massive muscle poured into a pink spandex suit. Each level takes you through different locations, which all don't feel as memorable as you would hope they would become. But, for what the game is, the level styles are only important in a gameplay sense. For a game this fun, the level layout is typically on a single plane level. These levels keep things simple and to the point, but can also involve frustrating sewer swimming moments that bring me back to Spider-Man X-Men Arcade's Revenge. Seriously, who thought it was a good idea to put super powerful characters that use their powers to fight evil and have them swim around? It's a weak idea that some developers use to try to branch characters out from their element without giving them any benefits of the character identifying with that atmosphere. They're just floating sprites with no identity. In a beat-em-up, it just doesn't work because it slows the pacing of the rest of the game to a grinding halt. The last parts of the game actually have you fighting while in the Megazord, and the end of the game is fun, fast, and provides a decent amount of challenge to overcome. This game's combo system, graphics, and music all complete a solid overall package that's worth sinking some time into beating. Speaking of music, the Super Nintendo's Power Rangers game has fantastic music, courtesy of Castlevania-famed composer Kinyo Yamashita, as well as Iku Mizutani, and the songs are fresh, fun, and overall really more phenomenal. What's up with Billy? You know, it's like they took a snapshot of the first episode and made a game based on it. But that's actually not true because there's enemies in the game that are from the entire first season. Alright, let's get this out of the way because it needs to be mentioned. Why is Billy such a wimp throughout the entire game? When you play as Billy, he acts weak-willed and frightened. But when he turns into a ranger, he's got some of the coolest and flashiest attacks in the game. The rest of the rangers all fit their corresponding attributes, but Billy is the only one who fights exactly the way he fought in the first episode. However, in the show, Billy gains a huge amount of character development in both his looks and his actions. His fighting skills greatly improve over the first season to the point that he can handle his own after the first few episodes. So why do we have the worst impression of him in this game? So why is the Green Ranger missing? All right, time to address this Green Ranger thing. Let's pop in the Sega Genesis version, take a look. If it wasn't for developer Ban Presto picking up the pieces from Natsumi's failure at including him, we might never have seen the Green Ranger in a video game. Sadly, this isn't enough to breathe life into this rather dull fighting game that Sega published. There's been a lot of online debates as to why the Green Ranger is missing from the Super NES version, but can be found in the Sega Genesis game. Some have said that it was due to a hardware limitation, that they simply ran out of memory. I have to debunk this, as the follow-up game, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie, had the White Ranger. Others have said that it was because Nintendo put pressure on Natsume and Bandai to have the game ready before Sega's version came out to get the jump on them. This is also false because the Super NES version came out after the Genesis. Also, the suggestion that it began development before Tommy came along is impossible, thanks to certain bosses in the Super NES version appearing well after the Green Ranger had been on the team. So as you can see, we've eliminated almost every reason that the Green Ranger is not in the Super Nintendo version of this game. I mean, why is it that we haven't had a ROM hack of this game? Somebody needs to seriously step up and make this happen, because I would throw down cold hard cash for a physical copy of a corrected Power Rangers game for the Super Nintendo. That's right, cold hard green cash. What up? Anyways, I went for an answer straight from the source and contacted Natsume directly. Sadly, I've yet to receive a response as of the publication of this episode. Hey, uh, buddy, I'm not gonna review myself. 
Back to the Sega Genesis game. You have two options, either single player story mode or two player battle. This game is a unique, yet very solid example of how to not rip off Street Fighter 2. The single player mode gets very repetitive, but it gives you the ability to unlock the Green Ranger. The replayability is lost in one player mode, despite a flawed but admirable attempt at a story, but the two player mode is actually pretty fun, despite being very chaotic. Your character can dash backwards and forwards, jump, duck, and awkwardly pull off various moves. There are lame versions of fatalities that happen without you pressing any buttons after defeating your opponent. It's entertaining to watch, and playing in two player mode, the game kind of runs out of steam fairly quick. That music? Oh, God. Oh, it's crippling to the ear. The Sega Genesis tracks are mostly unique to the game, but along with the sound effects, they either sound too flat or too sharp on the ear. The compositions themselves feel out of place, particularly for a Power Rangers game. I really wish I had more to say about this game, but the experience is over fairly quick. The single player mode takes about a half an hour to beat, and that's just a simple sit down playthrough. You really don't have to spend too much time with this game, as the entire thing doesn't have the precision and dedication that a game such as Street Fighter 2 or Mortal Kombat would have. It lacks an engine that requires any sort of in-depth strategy, something that fighting games use as a proper hook to reel in players wanting something technical, fast, and most of all, fun. So even though there's no Green Ranger, my vote still goes to the Super Nintendo game. It stands out as being one of the finer Power Ranger video games that's ever been released. The Genesis title, eh, not so much. Pretty bland. So, with that said, let's take a look and see what's going on with the movie version of the Super Nintendo game. Does it hold up to the same quality? We'll see.